Hi, I'm here with Rosemary Watkins and I've got a question for you from uh, somebody who submitted a question. They're asking, they would like to know the link between depression and clutter. She says, as a child I had no control over my parents fighting and drinking and I know it has impacted me. Wow, yes. Um, yeah, thank you, Sarah. And, um, just maybe to start with, I'll just say there's a distinction between uh, hoarding and clutter. And uh, with hoarding, disorder is now um, a, a mental health disorder that's captured in the DSM-5 or the Diagnostic uh, Statistical Manual um, from the American Psychiatric <laughs> Association. <laughs> and uh, they certainly make a link of, I think it's up to 75%, of people with hoarding disorder will have an associated mental health condition and about 50% of those would be like a major depression or anxiety disorder and about 20% would be um, an obsessive, an OCD, an obsessive compulsive disorder. So there's certainly a strong correlation between um, people that have hoarding disorder and some other mental health condition. Um, so, but to clutter then is little bit different in that many, many people have found they have clutter in their lives and it's often to do with accumulating way too much over the years and not um, having time really to go through and discard on a reasonably regular basis in this busyness of our modern lives. We tend to be quite time poor when it comes and it can end up just being shoved in a cupboard somewhere and you know, the door closed on it. Uh, but to answer the person's question, it's like, um, there is a, 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 an association between depression and hoarding disorder. Whether that she, if she has any concerns or he has any concerns about um, whether that his clutter may have moved into that kind of area, and generally that would be where there is some risk to the whole environment. It often makes a space unlivable. Right. Um, it would impact on others um, on a social and personal as well as a very much a safety aspect. And there's too much clutter from a risk of fire and, and so forth. So if, if she feels or he feels that he's that that's what's happened um, in their clutter has deteriorated to that level of hoarding disorder, then it would be important that they seek medical um, assistance, go to the GP as a first call, yeah. and then some specialist service to uh, support them psychologically uh, with that process of decluttering. Um, so, but then she adds, or he adds there, that mm -hmm. there's a... Um, sense of living in a background of alcohol and what was the other part As a that? child I had no control over my parents fighting and drinking. Yes, absolutely. So there was, um, again, that helplessness that can come from trying to, to fix something that's not fixable and that can certainly leave a legacy of, on all sorts, emotionally and psychologically into adult life. So I would um, definitely recommend maybe having a talk to the GP and then maybe a trusted friend first about the level of hoarding or a, a therapist um, to go and see. So she doesn't mention hoarding, just clutter. clutter so yes. sometimes it hasn't reached that level, is that right? They might be depressed and not, it might not be a whole heap, but it might just be enough that it's concerning to them. Yes, absolutely, yeah. okay. that she may well be... Um, having clutter that's impacting on her life in a way that um, she's feeling helpless and overwhelmed and yeah. that's a very common experience for people to feel quite overwhelmed and then often feel guilty and feel um, ashamed as well that they, they wouldn't um, you know have people come visit if it gets to that sort of stage in yeah. their lives yeah all right thank you